Do you think Canterbury acknowledged caravan as part of his cultural heritage? Initially, I think no. But as the years go on, I think we're, we're still there, we're still doing it. All the councillors are now getting to be, had to be our age, as opposed to parents' age, a lot older, so they're, they're, they now appreciate us a bit more. And I presume quite a few of them have got, have got the albums and the music anyway, so that they are beginning to come around to the idea of it, but it's a slow process, you know, unless you have big hit records, and things, which we never do. So. Do you think uh, there's uh, aspects in Caravan's music that are typical of this region of England and yeah. the musical traditions and stuff? I think there must be, because uh, all the songs that we write are a reflection of the things we're listening to and the things we're taking in. It all comes in a bit. It comes a bit like a soup from this. What comes out is quite individual to us, or to me particularly, myself. But all the things I choose to listen to won't be the same as Dave Sinclair's choice, for instance. So what comes out of me, although we both have the same you know, as a writing talent, you know, I will produce a different type of music to it than you know, he will. So it's a larger reflection upon, upon what you listen to, what you like, what you don't like. And if you to live here and, and, it, and you have all, all the countryside around you and the trees and, and, the, and the changing that's going on in town, as well as in the tourism, it's bound to affect you to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. When you formed Caravan compared to the uh, last lineup of the White Flowers, which was more or less a, a cover band of soul music, yeah. I understand. How would you say the particular style of Caravan was generated during the, uh, the time between those two bands and what influences were predominant then? Well, the influences were still very much soul music uh, because we were, we were playing soul music. But um, I began to write with Richard Sinclair, they began to write our own songs, and they were more sort of folky sort of songs in, at, at the beginning. But the mood at the time was was towards a sort of jazz approach, more of a, um, a longer number playing the solos and things like that. So we'd take the, the tune we'd written and we'd expand on it and we'd write other bits onto it from there. And that's how it started from, from, that, from that approach. And the influences were the Duke Ellington lots of soul bands obviously because we had just stopped playing that so we combined sort of a jazz thing like that and uh, I sort of we didn't have a sort of a potential of a sort of soft rock band you know. And were Soft Machine a big influence at the time? I, I read a review well, much so, yeah. of your very first gig yeah. in the Kentish Gazette yeah. and it said you played some original numbers as well as Soft Machine covers yeah. and New Harper songs. Yeah. So well, and we were all linked, and they, they went off before us, about six months or a year before us. Mm -hmm. And they started getting great success. And we were the sort of kids, you know, going, God, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. you know, I want to do that, I want to be up there. You know? So we derived the ambition from watching them. So we're bound to be influenced by them. So they were older than us, and they were, they were ahead of us anyway. So, and they were quite unique, weren't they? But the difference between you and Soft Machine was that they moved to London, mm -hmm. and you decided to stay in Canterbury. I think that's to do with families. and. Um, girlfriends and wives and also the, the, the main reason they moved to London was Robert Wyatt's mother lived in Dulwich and she had a big, there's a Victorian house and there were lots of spare rooms and to work you had to had to go to London at some point because that's where the work was that's all the companies were local companies were all, were all based there yeah. so they went up there and started doing gigs and they all ended up in that house in Dulwich um, so the, Kevin Ayer's mother lived down here he wasn't that close to her he was, he was in and out all the time Robert was with his mother up there Mike Mike's parents lived down here, but he went out there to stay, and then he moved out on his own because he had a girlfriend and moved out in London. So they all based themselves in. I was down here, met my wife, Kathy, very early on. It was 16, 17, we started a family. So you know, the base was here. So, you know, and it's an expensive place to live in London if you, if you haven't got much money. It's an awful place to, to, to stay if you haven't got much money because you can't compete with all the good things that are going on there. It's a hard one to live with if you see all this all the good restaurants and all, all the nice clothes and you can't afford to buy any of it. it mm -hmm. think, well, I'll go to a place that is you know, cleaner, fresher and there's not so much temptation. Do you think that ever was a problem to be from Canterbury and be seen as a band from a bit outside the business, a bit marginal? I no, know. I think it helped actually. It, the, the, it helped create this thing called the Canterbury Sound. Because it, the, we were very naive and we were very young when we started. We had no idea what was going on. But we, we had a sort of brand new music we wanted to play in and, and that was the driving force. We actually wanted to do this. We wanted to be rock stars, didn't we? But we wanted, you know, Ferraris and expensive looking women and all this. <laughs> Something went wrong along the line somewhere. But, you know, we were, as country boys, um, the whole attitude in the music business then was, uh, was that the, the bands had to come from somewhere or other, uh, from uh, up north from Liverpool, the Beatles, as well as well, from the Manchester bands. Or, um, Russell, um, down in Kent or the Midlands, all this sort of 
It all came from out of town largely. A few bands came from London, but not that many. It was all out of town, so. What about Caravan and the rest of the rock scene at that time in England? Did you feel part of it? We did feel part of it. We also felt we weren't quite the same as everyone else as well, which is, which is an important thing to, uh, to maintain, I think, because it, uh, if you are just like everyone else, then you just become a copy, and then you become a, just a cover band. And that's not much good. You have to have to work at your own individuality, your own, your own personality of, of the band. I think we had that because of the combination of the band members, me, Richard and Dave. Mm -hmm. Because we all wrote, and we all wrote in, in, a, in a particular way. We, we all we create an influence amongst ourselves. We influence mm -hmm. each other. So, so it spawned caravans and style of music. So.